Hello sailors and welcome back to another boat job video of STLT. Today we would like to show you a very much discussed boat upgrade. One that we have put on our nice to have list but actually really wanted to have. And after finding it for an unbeatable price we decided what the hell. If we want to improve our eyesight there are glasses that's going to cost us more and give us less visibility. So let us present to you today the installation of our new 15 year old radar. I know what you're thinking right now. Boring. I couldn't care less about radars. Well, you are probably right. But before you click away and search for videos of sailboats heeling over in 25 knots, just have a look at this bird. Just look at him for a second. What do you see? Are you also wondering what he's thinking? He is definitely not thinking about radars, that's for sure. Sometimes I wish I could be a bird. They can fly, walk, float, some can even dive and swim. And they don't need a radar or a plotter. They just follow their instincts. Pretty cool animals, right? All right, let's get back to our mundane, non-flying, clumsy human lives, guys. This might very well be one of the longest boat jobs we've ever tackled. Not so much in terms of work, but more in terms of time. It took us start to finish more than half a year. Surprisingly enough though, in terms of work, this might have been one of the easiest boat jobs we've ever done. There was some luck involved, some good planning, and of course the perfect collaboration between Alex's occipital lobe and posterior parietal cortex. Anyway, let's get started. Since we have an old school plotter and we did not want to spend thousands of euros on replacing all of our instruments just so we could have a radar, we did not have a lot of radar options. We basically just had one, which on the one hand makes it easy. But on the other hand, the plotter that we needed is from 2006. And this means that we can't really buy it new. So we needed to find someone that was selling theirs, preferably in the marina where we are staying and that for a good price. So yeah. What are the odds? Not really big, right? But once again, we got really lucky. You want to explain what you're doing? I'm opening up the nav pod that holds the chart powder because uh, it's my birthday and we got the radar. We need an old radar because we have an old plotter, which is good for us because it means we don't have to buy it new, but we can uh, get it secondhand. But it also means we need to find a certain radar and uh, they just found one. So that's coming today, including like an old bracket for a good price. So yeah, we for 450 we have everything. Bracket, radar and cable. This boat is gonna have everything. It's gonna be the most comfortable 36 foot you've ever seen. <laughs> of course, before actually buying the radar, we first hooked it up to the plotter to see if it works and if our plotter recognizes it. I uh, should just push in. Yeah. If it's lined up, it'll push right in, right? Yeah. And lucky for us, it did. Now yeah, stand by, radar transmit. There we go. Awesome. Woo! That is so yeah. cool. We got stuff. So we got the radar, including this Scanstrat mast mount, which is mostly the best place to put a radar. It is out of the way, there's no obstructions, it's high up for a better range, so that's pretty perfect. But in order to put this Scanstrat mount up the mast, we need to pull a cable through the mast, through our ceiling, into the navigation table, and then all the way to the aft of the boat, and then into the pedestal which is really difficult because this cable is over one centimeter thick. And normally production boat manufacturers leave cable sheets in place so you can have upgrades and pull the cables through easily. But unfortunately, all of ours are full and the cable is really thick. So that is pretty impossible. At least it is pretty impossible for us non-professionals. And sometimes the next best option is also good enough. And the next best option for some sailors would be to get a gimbaled mount onto the back of your boat. And gimbaled in this case means that your radar will always stay level and horizontal and that seems to be an important thing. But the thing with the gimbaled mount is that it will cost us more than the radar unit itself. So in our case the next best option would be to just mount it next to the solar panel 
onto our arch. And guess what? This way we do not need to pull this really thick cable all the way through the boat. We just need to get it through the pedestal into the plotter. And of course we need to make a massive hole again in the stern of our boat. We can't get it on the on the mast because we don't have space for the thick cable. But we do have space on the arch if we construct a plate that extends outwards. We could have probably paid for it when we did the arch, but then we wouldn't have had this video and I couldn't put these off of our taxes. I got four of those and we're gonna put these around the, the stainless tubes and then attach the, the plate on top, cut the excess of the screw and then we have a nice plate where we can put the radar on. So part one is find the plate, which wasn't easy but it happened yesterday. We went to Arecife, the main town of um, Lanzarote, but we got it. And the second part was drill the holes for this, measure them well and then realize that you cannot really put pressure on the, on the plate and fix it in place because these things are not long enough. And the screw threads. The, the threads are not long enough to actually put them edge to edge on the, on, the, on the tubes. Mandy had the awesome idea to make holes that are bigger so we can floop it over and then we just put spacers here until we have enough so we can just drill it down. That problem was solved. And I had the awesome idea to not put the U-bolt perpendicular because there was a bit of play in the tube, but twist it a bit. So now, also on these sides, the tubes touch and everything will be tight. I wonder if I did the angle correct because I just eyeballed it. Yes, and yesterday you did make a mistake. That was the one mistake I did. That's why we have seven holes instead of six now. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you have not. It is a powerful way to tell YouTube that our videos are worth watching, if you think so. We make this for you. Yeah, do you see the madness in me? Oh yeah. So Very let's much. see if I actually measured well. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Because I have six holes, seven, one is wrong. So I have seven holes and six have to fit. So now that the plate is mounted, it needs a bit of a tweaking, but that's fine. Uh, the next step is to figure out where to put the radar. I need four screws for that, 10 millimeters each. And usually when you buy it new, you get a template, but we didn't have that anymore because we bought it secondhand. So I just pulled out a piece of paper, put it on the back of the radar where the mounting screws are and used a pencil. And now I can see the mounting holes, bring that to the workshop and do the last four holes. But before that, I think we're just gonna put it on top and see if I, if I made a mistake because I feel like I don't have enough material outwards to fit all four screws. That would suck badly because then... So it does fit, that's a good sign. So I'm gonna take the piece of paper and go back to the workshop and drill the last four holes and then use a chisel to make a little pilot hole. Did you bring all the tools? No, I didn't. I noticed that it's easier to go on low reps, but steady. Then it doesn't get that hot and you have more grip somehow. But when you do the last bit, like get out the get out all the residue, then it seems easier to go high rev and just go in and out. Otherwise, you're just pretending to be a screw and you're gonna get stuck. but two screws seem to fit and this one needs a bit of a correction just as much as this one but not too bad I'd say
My last step on working the stainless is shortening the U-bolts so they don't stick out too much on the other side. In order to not damage the thread, it is important to have a nut screwed in before, because then I can screw the proxy nut out and restore the thread off the screw. Is it in actually, the, the 10 mil? Yeah. Well, because then it should fit and snug. Yeah, I'm trying. So I like push it at the top. I push here at the pedestal and then I pull it out here in the back. And then the last step. <laughs> And then the last step is Alex going down into the cabin and then he pulls it through the last cable canal that puts it on the other side of the boat. Okay, we were doing good progress and starting PTFE spray, it also went easier on this part. So we were reaching a point where we almost thought we'd made it, we made it. And then we saw that the tapon that closes off the cable was on the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> so we should have taken it off because we need to attach this on the radar side at the end of that cable. That was kind of funny, we just started laughing wildly because this was just... Feeding cables is more work than finding and buying a radar. Almost, yeah. But I remember that when we bought the cable second hand and the radar second hand that I thought to myself hmm we have two of those and it seems like we only need one and it, I remember correctly it was that piece so the person that we bought this from probably has none of it now and we have twice and we have two of them and one of them is actually on the radar right now so we can just leave it hide it in this one and nobody will know no one will know and someone else has a problem. So you're very lucky because I was not really happy pulling everything out again. I'll show you our success. Here, there you go. Got it. Now, we're just gonna go in here. And then you can see how easily accessible this is. I think that's the best spot in the boat to spend 20 minutes a day. Oh, so good. I'm pulling. Yeah. Wait, it's a bit too slipped. Give me a second. Okay. Yeah, pull. Wait, I'm gonna turn that off. Almost there. Almost there. You guys have no idea how good this feels. Look at that. We can close it up, even if we don't manage. Even if we don't manage, we can just close it up and we sustain status quo. And that is a lot of status to quo. Another meter. Are you done? Oh, oh. All right, there we go. I'm going to attach it. I cleaned the contacts and put in some contact spray before. So these should work for a long time. Now the big question is if we put it in the radar, does it still work? <laughs> oh yeah. So the cable that's gonna come through the deck is bigger than any cable that we've put through the deck until now. So we got ourselves a cable gland with a tapered rubber seal that you drill yourself in based on how thick the cable is. And the great thing about that is that this piece includes the cable drilling brass drill, which is simply a little tube with a sharp edge that you put on your drill and then you can just cut it out in the middle and you get the perfect size for your cable. So I'm gonna try that out today and you know if it works. More or less, I think that'll work. So this hole was bigger than any hole I ever had to drill in that boat. And we just got this one which is amazing because you could just go how, how far ever you want to go and it will do the job very nicely. So that's the end of the radar cable and you have the data connections and two times uh, power 
because this is for the it doesn't matter and so <laughs> try again so this is the radar cable and you have the data pins and the power and i'm just going to connect the pin to the pin that's on the board inside the radar and just these two with a flat hat and then that's it that's done it's pretty simple i hope all the cables are in let's find out if we made a mistake and turn on this Okay, you're ready? ready? You're ready for power? I'm ready. The data, no, page. Long click on page. And now we go to chart radar. radar. I trust you. Radar. Scanner warm up. <gasps> it actually recognized it. Yes, 40. Oh my god. 40 seconds. <gasps> wow. Woo. Wow. That is so cool. Look at that. What does it mean? I don't know. Oh. Yeah, I know. Just find your GPS already. Look at that. That is that's amazing. All right, I know most of you probably have radar, but this is just so cool. You can actually see the pontoons with the boats here next to us, in front of us and behind us. That is really fun. So recently we installed our second-hand radar and connected it to the C80 chart plotter. Now, together with AIS, this is why we still use the old chart plotter. The charts itself is just outdated, old and slow. But with AIS and radar on that thing, that's just going to be our collision central and our phones or tablets are our navigation central. When you go online, you will find loads of discussions on if and when you need a radar. And by now we have learned that in boating, there are as many opinions as there are people. And for us, needing a radar comes down to the following. First, the cruising ground, and second, your personal risk preference. From our personal experience, many boats that sail the Med, they don't really have a radar, and if they do, they mostly don't even use it. Because for day-to-day -day bay hopping or just shorter night sails, you don't really need one, and life is just as easy and great and safe without it. We ourselves also did not miss a radar when cruising the Med, like at all. And also when we crossed down from Spain to the Canary Islands, we didn't really need it. We have to say though that we have active AIS and this is something we would not want to miss. And if you want to choose one of those, we would always go for AIS first, especially in the Med, where there are so many cargo traffic routes. It is really good to have AIS because they can see you, you can see them, and it just makes for a peaceful sail if you have that. For us and probably most other people, there are two reasons though we did want to have radar once we left our European pond. And that is first, weather. We can see squalls coming when we are offshore for 20 days and we don't have grip files available. Also squalls are mostly not on there and the radar will tell you. And second, it is also collision avoidance. If there are some objects out there that don't have AIS or there's an island or something, you will see it on the radar. We have a target here. Which is that sailboat. And this is a big plus for us. Obviously, we don't have experience with the newest generation of 4G broadband radars. So in case you have one, and you experienced a major revelation after upgrading, please let us know in the comments. There must be a reason why everyone is so excited about it. And if you believe that what we did will put us in grave danger and we should upgrade to the newest generation of radar and marine electronics, then be my guest and head over to our tip jar link below. Oh, come on! But seriously, if you do enjoy what we are doing, then check out the link below to find out ways how to support the channel. We decided to go small, go now, and we love to take you along for the journey. Okay, thank you, bye. What did it do with my arms? What do you want to do with your arms? Dance. <laughs> <laughs>